Hey YouTube fam, how's it going? This is Tack with Your American Passion. Um, sorry I've been MIA for a little while, but I've been doing a lot. Um, doing a lot of things, trying to get myself together and figure out what I'm going to do as far as the next content I want to send. Well anyway, um, just to give you a couple of updates, this is an update video. And the update video is, I will be... Um, putting the little rusty red on the back burner and the reason why I'm putting little rusty red on the back burner is because there is more rust than I anticipated um, comes with the territory um, so I'm actually trying to contemplate if I really want to invest the time as well as the money to make it what I want, or should I actually make it a um, a dream custom bill? Now, what I mean by the, the dream custom bill, I'm thinking about doing a Volkswagen Bug floor pan, which is a lot stronger, a convertible Bug, which is a lot stronger than the actual Porsche. Um, so it's gonna have a little bit more reinforcement um, but I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to tie that in. The other thing is um, I need to find some way to uh, tie in the, let me turn it around so you can see. Actually doing, this is not going to be the problem. Any of this is not going to be the problem. The problem is when I put this on the wheels, as I was jacking up, the lateral are so rusty underneath that it literally almost folded in two. Um, I don't want to get rid of this car. I'm not going to get rid of this car. This is going to be an extremely long project. Um, but I did do what I told you I was going to do. I still have everything sitting in here. And what I ended up doing was, um, I turned around, excuse my mess here. I don't know if you remember the Volkswagen with the VR6 in it, with the uh, five speed, of course. I wanted a six speed, but of course this year didn't have it. I pulled the actual engine and transmission out of that with the shifter and the wiring harness, as well as the computer. And here we go. Wiring harness, cluster, steering column, coolers, wires, uh, pedal, axles, shifter, all of the things that I'm going to need to make this thing run besides the fuel pump, which I can get a fuel pump on Amazon, 135 pound fuel pump on Amazon for $57. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fresh up on this engine and I'm going to contemplate putting a turbo on this. Um, not sure how I'm going to do it yet. Uh, I know the stock internals can hold up to about 500 horsepower from what I've been reading. The actual mounts from here to here will actually mount here and here. So what I was going to do was cut me a hole, of course, on the inside, run them down, make me some sleeves. And once I make those sleeves, everything will be okay. Um, once again, I'm just giving you an update that I, I have not forgot about anybody. Um, I have not forgot about this project, but I've had some things to pop up on me that 
I could not turn away and I need to get those things taken care of so I can make some money so I can put some more money into this car. Um, the way it looks, I'm probably going to end up spending at least four or five grand on the actual body panels because I want it to be a hundred percent. Now, as strange as it may seem, this is how bad it was. The actual control arms had nothing to hold on to except for the back. But we're gonna make it, we're gonna make this thing work and we're gonna make it do what it do. Um, my whole focus is to actually take the console or the cluster and migrate it into it's not gonna actually look like a 911, traditional 911, because I'm gonna I'm gonna customize it. So um please guys. Anyone who's actually interested in this particular project, don't give up on me. Trust me, we will make this happen. But with that being said, I have another project. So without further ado, that's the reason why I'm putting this one to the side because I wanna make some money, like I said, to make sure I can continue this project on. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the 72 Coupe. It's rusty in all the right places or, or in all the places that you normally would have. But the body is in really good condition. Um, considering the age, considering what you have, um, you know, you always have those as well as the big Bondo types. Um, I did find out it's a standard coupe and being that it's a standard coupe, I don't have to worry about the Grande, um, and all the other stuff, but there's no engine, but there's a transmission. There's a big block transmission. Somebody had a, uh, 460 in here and they were racing it until it became a little too much for them. Let's put it that way. So the only rust that you see up here is here, which is the battery box, which is an easy fix. Um, and it's strange. What, what, what gave me the indication to get this thing was it was missing very, very minimum parts. The hood is outside. Um, it's missing the actual bucket for this side. The interior is complete. But here's the funny part. Look at the interior. It's a complete interior. Seats can be recovered, of course. And what threw me more than anything else, I will get you to look at this. Look at the headliner. No sags, no tears. Just amazing. Just amazing. It's got all the pieces to put it back together. New grill. It's got 130 something thousand. I'm not sure what the mileage is. It's 138,616. And what my plans are, what my plans are is to actually look at how much it's going to cost to fix and how much would it be worth if I sold it as is. Because not only this one, but I also have a 67 Ford Fairlane that the guy sold me. He sold me both of them for the price of one. He's trying to get out of the work. Now, I, I didn't actually tell you about the floorboards. The passenger side floorboards are in good. 
Uh, you can't see it. But the passenger side floorboards are in good condition. The actual, the actual driver's side floorboard is in basic condition, but there's only one spot that's bad, and that's right there. This part here is, I don't know if you can hear it, but everything else is pretty strong. So, once again, and, and, and I'm not expecting for this to be a trailer queen, but um, I'm trying to find a 71 Mustang is what I'm trying to find. I had a 73 Mach 1. I restored it completely. Um, I like the Mach 1s, but they're so overrated with the fastback look. And I like the, uh, I like the coupe style. The coupe stands out, I mean, to me. You can't tell any difference from the actual back glass Ford. You know, if you actually do a clone. But um, my 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 whole in, my whole intention is to do a V10 swap, and um, I don't know if I want to do the '72 Mustang coupe as a V10 swap or the '67 Fairlane swap. The only downside is both of these are all automatic cars um, as well as the 67 already has a 289 with the c6 in it now a lot of people that I know that's personally that's personal to me have been telling me to uh, just restore the 67 you know with a fresh up and sell it make some money off of it and do the v10 swap in the coupe if you agree to that uh, let me know Send me, a, send me a comment because I'm actually really anxious on this because before I start getting into my my replications, I do a lot of replicas, fiberglass work. That's truly what I love to do. But um, when I run across a deal like this, I just can't help it. It, it gets me excited and I'm like, bah. so um, I, as I was looking at this car, what what really sold me, Besides the interior, I'm going to show you something else. There's not a crack in the windshield. This car sat up for a year. The Ford Fairlane sat up for two years. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a picture of the Ford Fairlane um, so you can actually have an idea. I, picked the Ford Fair I will pick the Ford Fairlane up. On Wednesday um, the holidays kicked around of course I went out of town to go visit my family but um, I'm really anxious to see uh, what you guys think so once again this is this is tacked with your American passion um, I didn't forget about you of course the holidays and then of course I do work so um, I'm really anxious to see what is your view on doing a v10 swap in the 72 mustang coupe or doing it in the 67 fairlane and yes only only reason why i'm doing that is because the um i i, I don't believe in doing swaps that everybody else is doing you know that the coyote swap awesome swap awesome i can't do anything but congratulate people who can do it but i like to do something different different and i have yet to see anyone who actually glorify what the 68 did i mean it did something that most ford people didn't actually ex expect for it to do it brought back the actual muscle which now what we have is the 73 godzilla so uh, with that being said, um, I'm really, really, and I, I, I like the V10. I mean, you know, it, my, my F-250 is a V10. Um, I got an F-150, that's a 5.4. My F-250 is a V10, and 
Now my F-350 is the Godzilla. So, and by the way, when I went out of town to go see my family, it did superb. Um, for the size of the vehicle, it got about 15 to 16 miles to the gallon. No complaints. Um, and it's slowly breaking in. So for all of you, all of you that actually seen the videos, continue to see the videos because I'm going to uh, show you really what, what Ford is capable of doing with that Godzilla engine. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to hold any longer. I just wanted to touch bases with you, give you about a good 15, 20 minute video. And I want some comments and some feedbacks on what you truly feel I should do either a 772 uh, Mustang Coupe with the V10 uh, manual, because I was going to convert it, or do a 67 Fairlane with a V10 manual. Um, it's a lot easier on that Fairlane for me to keep it automatic. But I have people that can actually do one or two things, either um, give me, get me a T5 um, adapter as well as a transmission to go in either one of these. But uh, both vehicles have the 9-inch rear end. Um, I just got this car last week right before I went out of town on vacation. And now I'm back and I'm actually looking at everything that I need to do. And I'm going to run it from there. So... Please, 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 if you if you like, please like, share, subscribe. Leave me some kind of notification of what you think I should do. I'm, I'm putting myself out to you. Give me something to work on. Do you prefer me to actually keep going with the old school carbureted 460s, 360s, 427 if I can find one, uh, 351, Windsor, Cleveland, 302s, 289s, whatever you feel. Now, the 72 Mustang came with a 351, <clears throat> 351 Cleveland in it. But, once again, that goes to the thing of there's so many people doing those things. Um, I want to stand out. I want to stand out. So, um, the car was originally yellow. And I want to give it the, the mock theme, but on a coupe level. So, um, this is tech with your American passion. Please like, share, subscribe. Give me that thumbs up. Um, it don't cost you anything. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. If you give me a thumbs down, at least give me a reason why. Um, but I do want to be able to see what I can do with one of these two cars. One I'm gonna soup up really nice, the other one I'm just gonna clean it up and sell it. But um, in all, thank you for watching my videos. I truly thank you. I humbly thank you. Um, and all the guys that subscribed so far, trust me, I, I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to keep you guys going. I just have to get going with it. And, of course, with the holidays coming around, I'm a traveling man. I got a large family. So, once again, this is Tack with Your American Passion. Always remember, God bless you. Fight COVID. Peace.